Hello there, Mr. Wilson here again for what is part three of going through this AQA for the maths, um, June 2018, paper one. Um, so if you haven't already, definitely check out all the other parts, but I'm just going to jump straight into question nine. So, f of x is equal to 14 take away x squared for all real values of x. Solve for f of 2x is equal to 5. You must show your working. So, okay, what have they done here? Well, they've basically replaced the x in f of x with 2x. So all we need to do is go back through and replace the x in the actual function with 2x. So in other words, f of 2x is equal to 14 take away 2x squared, and that is equal to 14 take away 4x squared. Right? That's what we're going to get when we, um, when we sub in. Now they tell us that this is equal to 5. Right? So f of 2x is equal to 5. So we can rearrange this to make it equal to 0 by subtracting the 5. So we get, well actually I'm going to add, instead of subtracting 5, I'm going to add 4x squared and take away the, um, well, take away the 5 from that side. Because the reason why I might go about doing this is because then I've got a positive x squared and I don't have to deal with negative numbers. So if I add 4x squared to both sides, I get 4x squared plus 5 is equal to 14. So then I need to subtract 5 from both sides, so we get x squared um, is equal to, uh, sorry, 4x squared is equal to 9. And then I divide by 4, so x squared is equal to 9 over 4. And then to finish this off, I square root. Now, to square root a fraction, you just square root the numerator and you square root the denominator separately. So this is going to be, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. Now, this is the um, answer for x. However, there are actually two solutions to this. Because it says that you can have all real values of x, right, then technically there are two answers, right, because you can either have the positive square root or the negative square root. When you square root a number, there are two solutions. You can either, it can either be positive or negative. So here, x can be equal to the negative root uh, 3 over 2, or x can be equal to the positive root 3 over 2. It's like if you square root of 25, yeah, the square root of 25 is 5, but the square root of 25 is also negative 5, because negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. So we just need to be aware of the fact that there can be a negative and a positive solution to a square root, and that's kind of what they're testing this question, really. Okay, Question 10, rearrange 1 over xy is equal to 4, take away 3 over y to make x the subject of the formula. Right then, so first things first, let's multiply everything through by um, xy. So we get 1 is equal to 4xy, take away 3xy over y. Well, we're going to get some cancellation here, aren't we? Because y and y are going to cancel each other out. So we get 1 is equal to... 4xy, so this was, by the way, multiplying by xy, and then cancel. So you get 1 is equal to 4x, uh, 4xy take away 3x. And then we can factorise out x. So we factorise, factorise. 1 is equal to x brackets 4y take away 3. This is a very common technique, this. So if you've got two terms with the thing that you want to make the subject then you factorise out the thing you want to make the subject. Um, very common technique, this. And then to get x as the subject, you can di just divide by 4y take away 3. You can just divide by all of that. So we divide by 4y take away 3, which is that whole bracket. So we get 1 over 4y take away 3 is equal to x. And x is the subject of the formula. I mean, it doesn't really matter that it's on the, the right-hand side. Um, you could have it on the on the left hand side, but but that is making x the subject of the formula. Um, there are loads of different ways you could have you could write it, um, but this would be the, the sort of way that I would write it. I mean, arguably, I'd probably put x on the the left because it's traditional, but um, it doesn't matter as long as x is on its own. It doesn't matter whether it's on the left or on the right. So that would be making x the subject of the formula. So I'm going to write on the answer line: x is equal to. 1 over 4y take 3. 
So it's this factorising step here that's probably the trickiest part about this question. It's the step that students probably struggle with the most purely because it's um, not many spot that you have to factorise, but it's a very, very common technique to get x as the subject of the formula. Right then, let's move on to question 11. A curve has equation y equals 2x squared plus 3x take 9. At a point P on the curve, the tangent is parallel to the line y equals 4 take away 5x. Work out the coordinates of P. You must show your working. Right then, so they talk here about a curve and they talk about a point P and a tangent. Right? So they're talking about tangents, they're talking about gradients, basically. So the first step is to differentiate this thing here to get the gradient function. So dy by dx is equal to 4x plus 3. Okay, fantastic, but what's that going to help with this? Well, it says that the tangent is parallel to the line y equals 4 take away 5x. So the gradient of this line is minus 5 because it's y equals mx plus c. And they've just sort of switched it around a little bit. So the y-intercept is 4 and the uh, gradient is negative 5. That must mean that at point P, this gradient function must be equal to negative 5. So that must mean that 4x plus 3 is equal to negative 5. 4x is equal to negative 8. x must be negative 2. So we know the x-coordinate is negative 2. To find the y-coordinate, you just can sub back in so the curve equation, so y, the y-coordinate is equal to 2 times negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2, take away 9. So 2 times negative 2 squared, well negative 2 squared is positive 4, times 2 is 8. Subtract 3 times negative 2, well that's negative 6, and then subtract another 9, so that's negative 15 taken away from 8, so that is going to be um, negative 7 as the y coordinate so we get the coordinate of p to be negative 2 um, negative 7 now I talk a lot about classic techniques but this technique of differentiating something knowing the gradient and then solving for x so you basically do it in reverse because they haven't told you the coordinate normally if they tell you the coordinate you would sub in to find the gradient but this time you do it in reverse they've told you the gradient and you have to solve for x so it's a very common idea, this, that you have to differentiate, you know what the gradient is. Um, I mean, well, when I say you know what the gradient is, you have to sort of look for it a little bit with it being in parallel to this line. But um, just the idea of solving for x is, is quite a common idea um, in GCC Further Maths. And it, it's a really interesting question, this one. I, I actually really value this question. I think it's quite um, an interesting idea for four marks. And how could you check your answer? Well, you could sub that coordinate back in to, to some of the values here. So you could sub negative 2 back in to see if you get uh, the gradient as negative 5. You could double check that that you do get the the y coordinate. So you could, you could solve for x if you really wanted to, if you had loads of time. But I probably wouldn't do that. Um, but there's a couple of little ways of checking there. Right then, question 12. In the diagram, A is the point 15, 0 and B lies on the y-axis, the angle ABC is a right angle, and tan of theta is 5 thirds. Work out the equation of line BC. So to work out the equation of line BC, you need the gradient, right? and you also need the, um, the y-intercept. Now the y-intercept is B, obviously, that is the y-intercept, but you also need the, the gradient. Now if you know the, the coordinate of B, and you know the coordinate of A, well, you know the gradient of this line, and then perpendicular, you can work out the gradient of the other line. But we'll get there in one second. It says tan of theta is 5 over 3. So that must mean that the opposite of the adjacent side must be 5 over 3. Well, this distance here is 15, because it's 15, 0. So that distance there must be 15. And in, the other, in other words, this side and this side are in the ratio of 5 to 3, right? This side is five-thirds bigger than this side here. So in other words, we can divide this side by three and then times it by five and we get 25, which is the length of this side, because if you check, 25 over 15 is the same as five over three. So that must mean that this side here is 25. So that must mean the coordinates of B is 0, 25, because it's on the y-axis. 
So we know the coordinates of B, that's fantastic. Well, how are we going to find out the gradient BC in this case? One way would be that if you know what the gradient BA is, so the gradient of BA, well, the gradient is the change in Y divided by the change in X, so it's negative 25 over 15, which is negative 5 thirds. Well, then, this line is the negative reciprocal gradient of this line. So if this, li this line has gradient negative 5 over 3, then this line must have gradient of five, uh, 3 over 5, positive 3 over 5, because you, you take the reciprocal of the fraction and then you change it from negative to positive, so it must have gradient 5 thirds. Well, that must mean that we know the equation then, because we know the gradient and we know the y-intercept because it's 25. So that must mean the equation of BC is y equals 3 fifths of x plus 25. And we don't, usually if you get the gradient and, and a coordinate, you have to kind of sub in to find the y-intercept, but actually we, we don't in this case. I mean, you can do, but you'll just find that the y-intercept is 25 because, well, that's, that's what it is. So um, y even if you subbed in x is 0, you would still solve for the fact that the y-intercept is 25. Right then, I'm going to leave it there for this part. I'm sorry if the background has been a little bit funny. It's because the lighting's got changed a little bit. So I've had to... Um, that's why it's gone a bit grainy on the green screen. But um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been helpful and useful. If it has, then leave a comment below. It's always so nice to read those comments. But all I want to say is thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a fantastic day.